I am Taymor Rashid, head of generative AI innovation and delivery at AWS. Join me as I talk to leaders and innovators across Amazon who are using AWS generative AI to create hyper-personalized experiences for customers, streamline operations, improve productivity, and so much more. Learn more inside Gen AI at Amazon. I'm excited to have Brett Canfield here. He was a leader uh, for the product management and product strategy teams for the Amazon personalization team. Hey, Brett, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Tell us a little bit about your role at Amazon. I've been at Amazon a little over six years now, and I lead product strategy for developing uh, the personalized shopping experiences that customers use across our store. When you um, started this whole process of you know trying to use generative AI, how did you all figure out where do you, where you wanted to apply it within your business? Yeah. Just like anything else, we started with the, cust the biggest customer problems we could tackle and the needs that customers had. And one of the, the big ones that we identified was uh, it can be how time consuming it can be for customers when they're trying to ramp up on a new category, or maybe a category they haven't shopped in before. Mm -hmm. And to understand all the options available across the store, what's right for them, uh, the product landscape, and really to, to build that product knowledge and confidence so they kind of move forward with their shopping. That was one of the biggest needs we identified, and, and generative AI ended up being a great fit for that. Yeah, and you recently launched the feature. Uh, can you tell a bit about that? Yeah, we recently uh, just launched last week and announced a new experience called AI Shopping Guides. And these are generative AI-powered buying guides that really consolidate and proactively provide all the information a customer would need to uh, build confidence and understand the product lay of a land in a category. So with AI Shopping Guides, we're proactively consolidating the key terms uh, and features that you would look for in products, the most popular brands, uh, and the terminology that you may or may not know alongside definitions, visuals, shoppable content, product recommendations. And this is all brought together by Generative AI and proactively pr pr uh, provided to customers to make it easy for them. Yeah, there's obviously this uh, wow factor that Generative AI enables for many existing applications and the new applications as well too. As you were looking at your business, were there specific metrics or certain problems that you were trying to solve or opportunities you were trying to capture. You know, most often business leaders are thinking about how do they to drive top line growth or manage their costs in a way or even drive more engagement by users. How are you all thinking about that? Yeah, one of the things we want to do on across Amazon and help customers shop is just make it as easy as possible to find the right product. We know if we're able to help customers do that, that's going to be great for purchasing, for customers wanting to come back to the store more and more to be able to uh, increase the breadth and number of categories they shop with Amazon on. So it's really helping customers and building that relationship with them, uh, which we ultimately uh, will uh, help them purchase more, drive more sales and things like that. But if we can uh, increase the number of products and types of products that customers shop with us for, I thought that would be a great, great thing we could do. How did you sort of A-B test the effectiveness of, of the solution? That's that's a that's a good question. So once the first thing with generative AI, it's so new and it's such a fast moving space. The first thing we needed was uh, to know we had to be really flexible. Uh, so we needed the opportunities to have uh, different models for different use cases to be able to tune where we needed to. And then when we ultimately brought it to market. We looked at the categories where we could most help customers and started there. So what are those really high consideration categories with maybe more? Um, uh, terminology that may be more complex, things you don't run across uh, in everyday life, but you know they're on the product. So like, hmm, I may not know uh, exactly uh, what a contrast ratio is in buying a television or, or the definitions of things like OLED. Where can we help customers the most when we started there? No, that's great. I mean, I've had an opportunity to kind of experiment a little bit with that, and it's just great to see you know, that guide that you get as you're shopping. Um, I wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about the actual implementation and the technology that's running shopping guides. Can you talk a little bit about the technology and the services that you use? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's uh, It's been a lot of fun building AI shopping guides and kind of the core technology that's enabled it under the hood is Amazon Bedrock. Uh, we knew from the beginning in building AI shopping guides, it was gonna be a, a brand new experience. Uh, there was gonna be a lot that we we're gonna have to learn along the way and we needed a lot of flexibility. And so Amazon Bedrock uh, really has been the core technology that's unlocked that for us just because of the capabilities to use different models of different sizes, especially if you need to have smaller fine-tuned models or, or want to use larger models. I'd say Amazon Bedrock's probably been uh, one of the big unlocks for us here. What are some things that are top of mind as you're, what kind of feedback you're looking for? Yeah, 
it's just uh, the breadth of information that we're looking for. Uh, our customers are able to uh, really forget everything they're looking for in a single one-stop place. When they come and say, what we want to do for customers, program, everything we need to kind of build familiarity, be confident in the category, understand the terminology, and find the perfect product for them, uh, and hopefully learn about things they didn't even know about. Uh, and so that's really kind of what we're looking for in customer feedback. We're really helping them kind of move forward and say, oh, yeah, I've got, okay, I got enough now to kind of go do my shopping and kind of understand how to move down this category. Yeah, that's great. You, like many other teams, are trailblazing with how they're using generative AI across Amazon. Uh, what are some interesting lessons you've learned along the way that you think would benefit others? Yeah, definitely. I think one is um, there's a lot that you don't know. You don't know all that you don't know when you start. So you have to be set up to scale quickly. That was that was probably the one that we learned the most is from the very beginning, think, if this really works, are you set up to scale? Are you building the foundation where if this takes off, can we go, can we go big fast? Um, and so having that um, uh, kind of, uh, and on top, back of our mind from the very beginning was one. Number two was how important it is uh, to have the flexibility to be able to learn and pivot and adopt different models of different sizes uh, to be able to find out what works. Because a lot of it's going to be experimental, especially with generative AI. So are we able to learn fast, pivot off what is working, uh, double down on what is? Uh, and so those were those were times the two things that we really learned from the beginning is are we thinking about scale and are we thinking about flexibility? And what other considerations that you have around data in particular, because as these new projects in Gen AI, they all go back to data foundations, data platform, and things related to like data security and privacy. How did some of the work that you all did with Shopping Guide sort of influence that backend infrastructure? Yeah, the, the thing that we knew we needed to do was have um, a great base of knowledge. So at Amazon, we have a great base of knowledge that we can use from our from all the products um, and our catalog that we can sell. We also needed world knowledge uh, to make sure we're, we're able to bring everything in and uh, and have uh, the most popular, let's say, product types and attributes and all that uh, really healthy information for customers. And so we were able to bring that together in a way, again, powered by AWS services and keep it all very secure and safe uh, to actually do this at scale. When you think about the number of products and the number of customers we have, uh, it was really only the AWS services that we could allow us to do that. Yeah, that sounds great. And as you think about kind of the future of shopping guides, um, uh, what sort of things are you thinking about to sort of enhance the experience, maybe introduce some new features? Yeah, it's still very early days uh, and just getting out, just getting uh, this out to customers now. We're going to learn a lot, but there's so much more we can do with generative AI, uh, specifically in the visual explanation space. It's so much easier a lot of times to shop where, where things are, um, information is presented visually. And we think uh, there's a lot of great technology, specifically on AWS, that can really help us with, uh, with that type of visual experience. And we're excited to kind of uh, double down there. No, I'm pretty excited about it, you know, and now it's out in the open and people could start using it, so that's great. Well, Brett, thank you so much for your time and sharing more about shopping guides and the lessons that you've learned. It was just really inspiring to hear that and learn about the details about it. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for dialing in. 